Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's SD Medhaven here today and I actually wanted to um talk about something that's uh, been going on in game. We've had a couple of new tanks added over the uh, course of the past uh, let's say three seasons that have been introduced with mechanics that not a whole lot of people like. We've had one in the game for quite some time. If we go over to American, take the cruise off and then take a look at the uh, T95E2. This tank also supports Automatic Siege Mode, Automatic Pneumatic Suspension, what, whatever they want to call it. Now, in terms of medium tanks, I don't feel like there's much of a hindrance on these tanks whenever it comes down to it being completely automated or anything else. Max Gun Depression of 14, I believe without it, it's 9 degrees. And then the one that I want to go over today is going to be the Type 63 and the Dune Tank, the Wings of uh, uh, whatever the heck that last name is. I don't really care about the Dune Part 1 or the Dune Part 2. I didn't even realize that they were a thing. Now, the reason why I want to bring this up about the automatic pneumatic suspension or the automatic siege mode is the fact that, well, these tanks kind of force people out of their comfort zones. For example, let's hit reverse and then hit the siege, like try and hit automatic cruise control. For instance, it doesn't exist inside this tank. You have to go above 25 to be able to enter it. Now, now that you've entered your siege mode and you're above 25 and you start to drive uphill, out of nowhere, it's gonna cut out the moment it hits 25. If this was, you know, like, and keep in mind, at the moment, you're not able to utilize that benefit of the siege mode until you're basically at a standstill. To me, it makes no sense why it is not controlled by the D-pad or anything else or essentially manual like it is over in the TDs for these tanks just because in terms of flow and the way that these things feel inside the combat I'm not going to sit here and say that I think the Type 63 is a bad tank or anything else but in terms of all round performance I'm not a big fan of the fact that it's automated and it takes away because a lot of people they have a reflex to Essentially, at this moment, I would have left it inside auto drive because if I need to drive more than 10 meters or so, I don't want to manually hold this the entire time or even going forward. And manually holding it, going uphill in constant uphill combat, and then needing to enter a certain point, to meeting a certain criteria to be able to actually properly use this tank, it is a little bit uncomfortable. Not to mention the siege mode also likes to jolt and occasionally throw your shots off which which really forces you to need to take that time out a lot more just be able to aim down your sights for me i felt like playing a live match inside this i really don't care how i perform inside of it i personally don't think these things are bad but whenever it comes down to it it's just that they're flawed and it makes them difficult to play and your ammo rack in the Type 63 is very well placed. It only took one shot to pop it off. Anyways, let's jump inside the Dune tank. I'll do a little bit of a better performance inside that one, hopefully. And before I jump into a match, there is something else I want to bring up. This tank doesn't have any additional camo slots, nothing available, no emblems, anything else. But you have to put transparent camo on it, which is going to cost you vouchers. Or it's going to cost you gold to be able to do so. Um, I'm sorry, but... That should have been included with the tank upon the purchase of the tank, and it should have been included with the pricing of the tank. I find that it's kind of um, a little bit of greed, in my opinion, whenever I think about it, uh, over on Wargaming's end to do this, but they gotta make money. It should have came with four vouchers to begin with, just to make it to where you could buy the tank and it came with the vouchers. I, I just, personally, I think that's a bit scummy that this thing doesn't have any customizability in terms of looks or emblems. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a contract tank, but even then. Now, personally, I find this tank right here, this tank could have had a lot of potential. In all honesty, I, I feel as if the uh, pneumatic suspension on this takes away because without your pneumatic suspension on, you only get five degrees of gun depression. And then once it's active, you only get nine. So in terms of the actual usability on this tank, I would have preferred just 7 degrees of all-round gun depression and no pneumatic suspension inside this. And In my eyes, it would have been perfect to leave it the way that it is. And then rather than having a siege mode, give it 
a turbo instead. If if that would have been the case, this would have been legitimately an extremely good tank to play with. Uh, don't get me wrong, the space arm and the outskirts here, people like to shoot those thinking they're weak spots, but in reality they're not. So sometimes you can catch people out that try to come after it, but they have no idea. So then they see a red indicator, and a red indicator is not a penetration point. It is just a big idea of, uh, <laughs> you're going to go through it, but it's not guaranteed to damage it. They do need to update their targeting information in this game. There's a lot of things that they need to update in this game. And one of them is the release of tanks, because the Type 63, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I don't think it's a bad tank. I think the Type 63 is an absolutely amazing tank. And on top of that, you know, I'm not yelling or freaking out to the fact that I just took 1,100 damage from a Jagdpanzer 100 because it was honestly my mistake by overpulling there and not keeping track of what TDs were on the enemy team and wasn't expecting a Jagger to be sitting back there and it should be over on the uh, far side. But it is what it is. We'll see how much damage I can throw. I'm not really super worried about dealing the damage right now, though. And in reverse, this tank can actually enter... Auto. So if we come to a stop and we hit it, we go backwards. Once we pass 15, we're able to enter it. However, inside the Type 63, you cannot enter the reverse cruise control. No matter how hard you try. Just because it is limited in so many ways. And on top of it, whenever you're looking down and you start to accelerate, your tank actually gets kind of locked out on the acceleration. I just... I'm still blown away to this day to the fact that these are still automated and not manual. Because if it was manual, the Type 63 would feel a lot better just because you'd be able to enter your cruise control whenever you want to or actually have some usability on it. Now, whenever it comes down to a lot of these automated suspension tanks, you are capable of unlocking and completely looking around your tank if you really wanted to. And that's because these tanks utilize something known as like a free cam, so you can unlock and it's going to rotate to where you're looking in that general direction. Not just that, if your sensitivity is faster, the gun's going to always try to keep up with them. This, I do not mind in the slightest whenever it comes down to it, just because it's a completely separate feature and it's a part of the free cam. If anything, I would like to see it standardized in terms of, like, universal gameplay, and all tanks should support that type of aiming indicator. Just because, it, it don't get me wrong, some people would be irritated with it, but... These tanks, their design and the way that they're put together, the mechanics of them are completely different compared to any other tech tree or other premium in the game. And don't ask me how I got third. So right now, after looking over the website and uh, realizing that I got a brain fart, I realized something. And Wargaming would be able to do this so much of a problem. Here on the Type 63, if we come down, we can see that Siege Mode Auto Switch 25 and then Siege Mode Auto Switch 25. Personally, I would like to see this reverse lowered down to 10 kilometers and the forward speed lowered down to 10 kilometers for the heavy tank. And the main reason why is because this thing doesn't go faster than 15 in reverse. This thing goes 14 in reverse, sometimes 15 if you're downhill, 14 standard. So in terms of the way that this tank performs, I would like to see it lowered if you're unable to actually change the base number or to if there's some sort of like coding issue in the game. I would just like to see some of these tanks have a lower siege mode requirement and then whenever you're entering the siege mode to make it to where like you're kind of jammed out inside that speed to be able to engage inside combat. But for the way that it is right now, it is a struggle. And this tank, I like it, but this is one of the reasons why I don't. My hand was off the controller, and I just immediately came to a stop. On top of that, being forced to manually do this uphill the entire way, because you can clearly see 15 is the fastest I can go up the hill. Also, I would love to see this get fixed. If I fire, we're going to hit an invisible wall here. Yet we can see all the way through this, but if we come out, now we can actually shoot past from here now. These invisible walls and a couple of these maps, I... Do you want to see these kind of get bounced out? They've been in it since the maps came back. All right, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm in pure panic mode. Um, yeah, it's it was two versus ten. Oh, God. 
And we all know how fantastic artillery is whenever it comes down to locking you down. But to me, I enjoy the Type 63. I think this is an absolutely monstrous vehicle in this game. And it it's just so difficult to play it. In all reality, I, I play this tank and I find myself struggling, you know, getting a mastery badge and a Radley Walters even on a losing match and still ending up top of the scoreboard, top of uh, uh, my team, nine kills, 6,273 damage. And honestly, if I didn't go down the hill to engage the ARL, I probably could have won this one versus three. But to get back to what I want to say about this tank, I don't like the fact that it's automated because it, it takes away a very simple mechanic from the tank, which is cruise control. Um, the Strav S1, um, all of the Swedish tank destroyers, it's all automated and you control it however you want to. I don't see how um, that's much of an issue programming these tanks to be the same way or even taking the Dune tank and completely rewriting the Dune tank into having, let's say, like a, a, a turbo mode that makes it go uh, it's 65 and then lower its top speed down to 50 and give it 7 degrees of gun depression and call it a day. Because the penetration this thing offers, 230 standard, and I believe that's a 230 AP round. Uh, yeah, 230 AP, and then you have 300 millimeters of heat. This could be an absolutely monstrous tank, and it could be super easily relied on to make a lot of silver inside game for people who per purchased it, and that's what they want to use it for. I purchased it because, to me, uh, I actually, did I purchase this one? I don't think I did. I, whoever gifted it to me? If someone gifted it to me, thank you. Um, but to me, I, I like the design of it. I like the way it looks, but I don't like the way it plays. The way it plays, it feels like you have to be that much more engaged because a lot of the time it's manual, but the wings of a car, um, uh, the wind, why do I keep on saying wings? I don't know why I keep on saying wings. Uh, dyslexia. There's no G inside there, but I'm going to put one in there and pretend that it's there. But then Type 63... This thing has the perfect reload. This thing has the perfect amount of gun depression. Eight degrees is a really good amount of gun depression. And then you enter your siege mode whenever you feel like the need to have it rather than it being automated and everything about your tank feeling clunky inside of any engagement that you have. It just, that's the way that it feels. It feels clunky and unnecessary on a lot of these tanks that they have it on. Anyways, you guys, thank you for jumping in. I just want to make sure that I bring this, um, make people aware of this because this is a really, really good tank. The Type 63 and then the Dune tank, they're really good tanks, but unfortunately they were brought into the game with a flawed mechanic that makes them a nuisance to play. And if that nuisance wasn't there, these both could essentially be daily drivers for a lot of players that enjoy them because personally the type 63 to me is an absolute monstrosity inside this game when played correctly but the only thing that hinders me from ever wanting to play it is the fact that i have to work on maintaining just a really simple thing anyways guys thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next one till then i'm out and probably going to put a couple more matches inside this because that last one was pretty nice.